You clicked on this video because you need to know exactly what type of file to send to a printer or a print on demand service. And that's exactly what we're gonna cover today. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna walk you through the difference between PNG, PDF, SVG, and AI files. I'll show you when to use each one, how to set your DPI and color mode so the print looks super sharp, and how to avoid the nightmare of fonts breaking when you hand off any type of design. I get these questions constantly from my audience and I've made every single mistake myself, which is why I know exactly what you need to look out for. But here's the thing nobody really tells you. The right file type doesn't just depend on what you're printing, it also depends on who is printing it for you. A print on demand platform has very different requirements than your local print shop. And if you don't know the difference, you can waste time, money, and effort. So let's just break it all down. As you can see, people are asking about this constantly. Can I send an SVG? Do I need Illustrator? Is Canva, is a Canva export actually printable? These are real struggles. So let's make this super clear so you never have to wonder again. First, you need to understand the difference between raster files and vector files. Think of raster files as photographs. PNGs and JPEGs are made of pixels, like tiny little dots on your screen, and the moment you enlarge them too far, those dots stretch out and blur. That's why sometimes you see a fuzzy logo on a banner or someone sent a raster file that just wasn't large enough. Vector files, on the other hand, are like little math equations. They're made of points, paths, and pixels. Because they're mathematical, they can scale indefinitely without losing clarity. That's why a logo made in Illustrator can be teeny tiny on a business card or massive on a billboard and it will still look razor sharp. So the rule is simple. If your design is photography based or going directly into a print on demand dashboard like Printful or Print, you can use raster files, which is gonna be a PNG or a JPEG. If your design is a logo, line art, or something that needs to be scaled or be cut cleanly like vinyl decals, screen printing, engraving, logos, send a vector file. That's an AI or a PDF that contains vector data or a PDF that contains vector data. Let's talk specifically about print-on-demand platforms first. So print-on-demand platforms like Printful and Printify. These companies need files that slot directly into their automated systems, so Vector is not the standard here. For apparel like t-shirts and hoodies, the gold standard is just going to be a PNG at the exact print size with a transparent background in sRGB color mode. For large items like t-shirts, uh, 150 DPI is acceptable, but 300 DPI will give you the best results. So we always wanna be aiming for 300. For smaller items like mugs, phone cases, and stickers, you have to go with 300 DPI every single time because the designs are shrunk down and any fuzziness is gonna be magnified. A good rule if you're designing a 12 inch chest wide print, export your file at 12 inches wide with 300 DPI. Let me show you exactly how to export this right inside Canva. Here's my Canva design. I'll click share, download, PNG. Notice the size slider. And if I want a 12 inch design at 300 DPI, it needs to be at least 3,600 pixels wide. Canva doesn't say DPI directly, but the math works the same way. Pixels divided by inches equals DPI. I'll also check transparent background if this is gonna be a shirt. And see here, Canva automatically exports in sRGB, which is exactly what Printful and Printify recommend. Now let's shift gears to traditional print shops, the kind you'd use for flyers, posters, business cards, or your signage. Here, the expectation is totally different. Most printers will ask for a press-ready PDF. This is not the same thing as just saving a Canva or Illustrator file as a PDF. A press PDF has specific standards built into it to make sure every little thing prints correctly. PDFX is the modern standard. It preserves transparency, keeps color management intact, and is widely accepted by most print houses. PDFX1A, PDFX1A is the older version that flattens transparency and locks everything to CMYK or spot colors. Some older workflows might still require it, but PDFX is usually the safer choice today. And then there's bleeds and crop marks. So if your design goes all the way to the edge of the paper, you need to have a bleed. Typically one eighth of an inch all the way around will suffice. That way when the printer trims it, there are no ugly white slivers on the edges. Crop marks simply tell the printer where to cut your pages. If you're working with a local print shop, ask them what their preferred standard is and always export with your bleeds and your crop marks included. 
Now let's get in Illustrator and export this as a press ready PDF. Go to File, Save As, Adobe PDF. In the dialog box, pick a preset. If your printer hasn't told you otherwise, choose PDFX4. That's a modern standard and it supports live transparency, color management, all that good stuff. Under marks and bleeds, check crop marks if your printer wants them and set your bleed to 1 8 of an inch on all sides. Under compression, leave the default settings. They're gonna be optimized for the highest quality print. Finally, click save PDF. This gives your printer a professional press ready file that they can drop straight into their workflow. Some older shops may still ask for the older type of PDF, which flattens everything into CMYK. And if that's the case, just choose that preset instead. If you're not sure, I would go with a PDF X4 as a safe default, but you can always just ask your printer. If your design is in Canva and you need to send it to a printer, let's go ahead and walk through that. In Canva, you wanna to go to share download PDF print. This is the option designed for the highest quality printing. If your design goes to the edge to edge, check crop marks and bleed so the printer knows exactly where to trim them. If you see the flatten PDF toggle and turn that on, this is gonna lock everything, including your font, so nothing shifts when the printer opens the file. Most printers will accept PDF straight from Canva, but if they need a specific format, you may need to run it through Illustrator or Acrobat to finalize your file type. Fonts are one of the trickiest parts of preparing files. So in Illustrator, you have the ability to outline your fonts. That means that the text is converted into shapes so you will never lose your text. It looks perfect even if the other person doesn't have that font installed on their computer. But Canva does not have a true outline feature yet. If you export a PDF to someone and they don't have that font file, the text can reflow or substitute and suddenly your carefully styled design looks completely wrong. The best workaround here is to choose the flatten PDF option. This is gonna bake the text into the file as artwork, so it should look the same everywhere. It won't be editable anymore, but it will be safer than your other options. In Illustrator, the safest option is to save one version with live text and then make a copy where you're gonna outline all of the text before exporting. This way your printer gets a file that will never change on their end, but you still have an editable file on the back end. SVG deserves its own shout out because it's technically a vector format, but Canva doesn't always export SVGs the way printers want. That's why I made a full tutorial on how to take your Canva file into Illustrator and properly export it as an SVG. That's especially important if you're doing final cutting, create projects, or working with a printer. That video is gonna be linked in the description and up here on the screen, and it's gonna be your perfect next step if you're diving deeper into vector workflows. If you've ever struggled with getting a clean SVG out of Canva, especially if you need it for Cricut, vinyl cutting, or handing off to a printer, I put together a free one-page export from Canva to SVG Cheat Sheet, and it's gonna walk you through step-by-step -step through the whole process and show you exactly which settings to use and explain how to bring it into Illustrator the right way so your file does not break. You can grab it for free. I'll link it in the description and pin it in the comment at the top. It's a super quick download and it's gonna save you a ton of time and a ton of headache. If this video helped you, give it a quick like. It really supports my channel. And if you never wanna miss any of my tutorials, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. I post videos on Tuesdays and Fridays, so you definitely don't wanna miss those. Drop your questions in the comments because that's what inspires the next tutorials that I make for you guys. Until next time, see you guys later.